Awesome. And we are recording, my friend. Great. Okay. So as I said, welcome, everybody. This is uh, one of my good clients here, uh, George, who can't join us today, but uh, uh, George has been a great client for many years, a friend, and uh, also a co-worker at one point in time. And uh, um, yeah, so, so let's just start off. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, today's training uh, is called Three Steps to Crushing Your Sales Numbers in 2017. Uh, and really focuses on, on one critical area, uh, which as you can see is about execution. And I really implore if there's one message you walk away from today, it's don't leave execution to chance. And I, I think one of my, uh, my old stockbrokers uh, told me that hope is not a strategy, so neither is leaving things to chance. Uh, I, I specifically designed this training, although it can help many, area, many folks, for sales and marketing executives in the pharmaceutical, biotech, medical device, OTC areas, because uh, I have a strong background in healthcare and we've rolled this out with healthcare companies. And we've also surveyed them over the course of the last six months so we could truly understand their biggest challenges. What they've told me uh, is they're getting tired uh, of being able to, or not being able to consistently crush their sales numbers month over month. Uh, you know, they'd like to execute better but are just struggling to figure out how. And uh, you know, they've also gone to a point where they're much leaner than they've been before, with many, in many layoffs and downsizings. So if you folks are, are open to learning, I'm gonna share some new concepts with you, you're in the right spot. And I think you're gonna find this really, really interesting. So let's get started. Um, and again, I appreciate you joining me in, in this journey today. And before we get into the content, uh, I wanna let you know this training is sponsored by uh, the STAR Business Execution Program. And really what the program is, is a rigorous three-step training, coaching, and consulting program where we work with you and your team to develop customized execution plan. We coach your leadership team throughout the year and support management cadence and management discipline. Uh, what the program has done is it really helps to align and focus your sales and marketing teams on what they need to do and what's critical to do to crush their sales numbers. And also provides a number of touch points, minimum every month, to ensure that the plan is on track and successful. And I'll tell you more about this uh, opportunity and program towards the end. What I can promise you is that I'm trying to slow down my talk is that I move quickly and you're gonna get some very actionable content. So be ready to take notes, get out your action plan uh, guide, or a notepad, and here we go. So what we're gonna to cover today in our journey is who am I? Uh, some folks uh, may know me, some folks may not. I really wanna you know, cut into the leading edge research and what's it saying on business success. I'm gonna share a three-step process to great business execution. At the end, I'm gonna give you a special offer, and we're also gonna leave it open for questions and answers. So by the end of this training, uh, you will know the formula for crushing your sales numbers, a three-step process for executing with excellence in your business. Uh, we're gonna talk about some of the key things that everyone is searching for, how to generate accountability, how to generate buy-in, how to create ownership to executing the plan. And one of the most important things we're gonna cover off, and you're gonna see is the power of metrics. If you can't measure it, you can't, uh, it doesn't get done. Okay, so let's just take a minute. I wanna see where everyone's at, and uh, I'd like to take a quick poll just to get a pulse of uh, where everyone's at today. So the question is, you see up on the board here, and it's a simple yes or no, do you feel like you are well positioned to crush your sales numbers in 2017 at this point in time? Yes or no? All right, so we have a lot of people voting. We're going to count this down in five, four, three, two, one, and we're going to close the results, and I'm going to share those results with you, Stephen. Um, so, Stephen, can you okay. see the results? I sure can. Thank okay. you, AJ. Uh, very interesting group, and, uh, you know, I wasn't sure what to expect, and, and we pretty much have a split here. 57% uh, say yes, and, and that's fantastic, and there's 43% that say no. So... You know, so if you're one of the 50% of you, let me just put up my screen once again. Okay, uh, screen's up there? It is, yes. 
Okay, perfect. Just just double checking. I don't want to be yakking <laughs> without uh, without the screen being up there, right? So for those of you who uh, you know in the fifty seven percent, you feel you're well positioned to crush your sales numbers. I think that's fantastic. For those who said you are not well positioned to crush your sales numbers next year, I'm really excited because here by the end of this training, you'll have a proven three step business execution process which will help you turn your strategy into sales. And most of you know that you know a combination of brilliant strategies and being able to execute them with excellence, you ensure that you have a highly successful year. Now for those of you who felt you're well positioned across your sales numbers, don't go anywhere. My goal really is to make sure that you can have some real actionable tips to make your following, uh, to make the following year, 2017, with just some incremental improvements to take your year from good to great. So here's the process. Let me just share it with you and then we'll, we'll come back to it. But three-step process starts with step one, which is really about um, building the plan. So you need a plan if you want to move forward. The leading execution, which is really up to the business leader and their leadership team to move things forward. And one of the biggest challenges we, we face is making sure that management has the discipline to follow up and follow through. Okay, so if this is why you're here, just say yes, I'm, this is why I'm here, uh, and, and we'll get you guys sort of interacting a little bit, and uh, maybe AJ, you can read off some of the names and say, this is why I'm here today. So Anybody? let's see what do we got here in the question. Make sure the questions box is, is working. Yeah, so we have Alvaro. He's totally here. And everybody's like here. I um, have a couple more yeses coming in. So everybody's here. Really excited to see what you have going on, Stephen. Okay. Nolene's so, excited. Lots of people are excited. Great. Well, I'm glad to hear that. And as you know, uh, my name is Stephen Rosen. And I'm going to share uh, a bit about my leadership journey and my leadership challenges. And uh, it seems like just yesterday, but uh, starting back in, in 1990, uh, I don't have it here, but you know, I, I became a sales rep for a pharmaceutical company and worked the retail end of the business. Uh, in 1991, I had a phenomenal year, and I was named sales rep of the year. And because of that, I guess, uh, they decided to, uh, to promote me to sales manager. Gave me actually gave me no training, and it was kind of a sink or swim situation, but somehow I survived and um, worked my way up through that organization to become business unit head. I worked through national sales manager, regional sales manager, a business unit head, and then eventually to become vice president of sales and marketing. I wasn't trained for any of my jobs, so in many cases I learned through the school of hard knocks. There wasn't a ton of webinars in those days that you can pick up some really good ideas. And then I hit a brick wall in, in 2001 uh, where I call it a life-altering event. Uh, when I was VP of sales, I, I actually got, I don't know what you want to use the word, but I experienced uh, clinical depression. And, uh, you know, I was making a lot of money, but wasn't really happy where I was. It was a bad place to be. And I decided that, you know, money is not everything and position is not everything. And I decided to make some radical changes in my life. And I got out of industry. And I toned down my need to advance in my next position. Uh, and in 2003, when I left industry, after going through two years of clinical depression, and which dissipated as soon as I left, uh, I founded Star Results. And Star Results had many iterations, and I have to tell you, it's not, you know, a lot of people say, Stephen, you know, I want to become a consultant after industry, and it's not that easy. You certainly don't make as much money as, as you do in industry, and uh, certainly it's not easy to build a coaching, training, consulting business. You know, I had lean years. I had okay years. However, the one thing is I endured because of my passion to help sales leaders. And today, uh, I'm very proud to say I've coached hundreds of sales executives and managers in the last 13 years. I've spoken at a number of industry conferences and I've been featured in places like Selling Power Magazine, Forbes.com, as well as Top Sales World. Um, you know, my last uh, stint in industry, as I mentioned, was not my best in terms of mental, mental shape, but over a three-year period I was able to take sales from 70 million when I started to 221 million in a uh, in a pharmaceutical company and as we know with no new products it's very hard to generate growth but as I said in 2003 I founded star results 
And I guess over the last few years, I've been recognized as one of the top 50 sales influencers in the world. I wrote a book called 52 Sales Management Tips, The Sales Manager Success Guide, and my blog, which you can find at, uh, if you type in sales management blog or um, on my website, uh, is one of the top 50 sales and marketing blogs, again, by Top Sales World. So here's the challenge that we face, and uh, uh, you know I, I don't want to overstress it, but if you look at the calendar, we're November 15th. I've crossed it off, but there's still time today, right? Maybe not in Barcelona or Australia, you're already in November 16th, but we're 46 days from the start of 2017. And if you and your company want to execute with excellence, you really do need to act soon. And the first step is bringing your management team together to get them aligned, build a plan, and take accountability to execute. I would have you consider that you need to act now if you want to be in position to crush your sales numbers. So half of the folks who don't feel they're in position, this may be a, a necessary step for you to take. You know, most companies that I work with, especially in this industry, um, usually have sales management meetings planned to bring in their sales managers, share the marketing plans, get ready for the national sales meeting, uh, and then launch the year. What may be even a better approach is to bring them in, adapt your agenda to accommodate an exercise in building an execution plan. I'm sure you'll all agree that a combination of, what we say, brilliant strategy, execution, excellence, if you're able to get those two together, your organization is guaranteed for success. And I know many pharmaceutical companies are great at developing brand plans. They have rigorous processes in place. On the execution planning, I would say most don't have any process and really leave execution to chance. And maybe you guys can relate to this. But my message today, as I said earlier, is if you want to crush your sales numbers, don't leave execution to chance. So when I say pharmaceutical, you know, I'm talking about biotech, I'm talking about medical devices, I'm talking about medical equipment, so the healthcare area. And we all know that we're a research-based industry, right? We present our, our drugs with research. So whenever I present, uh, and I guess it's just uh, where I come from, whenever I present stuff, I really do want to make sure I'm looking at the latest research and can share the latest research with you. In fact, there's much more research done uh, when, when I've done my research on strategy development than there is on execution. And I think that speaks to the problem. So, so I want to share some of the research uh, that, that I've done, who it's from, because there's some real leaders in the area of, of execution, and um, I want to share those with you. So there's a, a, a well-known anecdotal business statistic that says 90% of companies fail to execute on their strategies. You know, so I, I found it in a number of places, and we trace that back to uh, this gentleman, Robert Kaplan. Uh, he's a professor at Harvard Business School. He's authored 14 books, business books, over 150 papers, including 23 Harvard Business Review papers. And in his book, which is called The Execution Premium, uh, he concluded that 90% of companies fail to execute. And I found this figure incredibly mind blowing, as I'm sure. All companies really do want to execute. The problem is they haven't planned out how they're going to do it, so how do they know if they're even successful? The next piece of research, uh, which is just a recent um, Harvard Business Review from March 2015, and there was really three really interesting findings uh, in a paper that said, or a, an article that said, uh, why strategy execution unravels and what to do about it. So the first finding was, that in a survey of 40, and it's a recent survey of 40 global CEOs found that executional excellence was the number one issue facing corporate leaders around the world. And there was a list of 80 issues, including stuff like innovation, geopolitical instability, top line sales growth, and of all those, you know, the other 70 or so, executional excellence topped their list of concerns. Secondly, uh, they quoted a study, you know, which talked about how difficult it is to execute. And what they found is somewhere between two-thirds and three-quarters of large companies 
fail to implement their strategies effectively. And the last piece um, was a study of 125,000 employees, which represent which were in more than a th thousand companies. They also looked at government agencies and non-for-profit organizations in 50 countries. And employees, when surveyed, rated their company, 60% of them rated their company weak at execution. Wow. Uh, uh, this quote here or from Ram Sharan, and I want to just share with you who Ram is. Uh, he's an advisor to many senior executives and board of directors. He's known throughout the world for his insights into why companies are successful and why others are not. He has authored over 20 business selling books, business books, sorry, uh, and of course, a couple in the area of execution. This book, which we got the quote from, uh, the dis execution, the discipline of getting things done. And he says 70% of strategic failures are due to poor execution of leadership. It's rarely due to not having the smarts or the vision. So execution and leadership's involvement is critical for success. Uh, the next person I want to share with you is Morris Chang. And Morris is the founding chairman of Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, which is the largest uh, silicon foundry in the world. These guys are like the intel of, uh, of the Far East. And he says, and I think this is amazing, without strategy, execution is aimless. Without execution, strategy is useless. So the two go hand in hand. So let's make sure we, we're all working on the same page. And, you know, I, I try to keep things very simple. So one, I can understand them, and two, I can explain them. So if we were to look and say, uh, you know, let's get on the same page and have the same definition of execution. And how I define it as execution is the discipline of getting the most important things done. So there's two components. One is discipline, and two is really about focusing down and figuring what the most important things are. So given the research has shown that many companies struggle to execute, if your decision, if your division or your business unit is struggling, the impact from my perspective, and I've seen it firsthand, could be catastrophic. So poor execution, um, you know, is not good. In fact, it's bad. And I've seen leaders uh, who, whose teams are struggling to execute and they find that their customers are frustrated, right, because they're not delivering on what they said they're going to deliver. Their team is disengaged. They face challenges making their sales numbers. You know, and many of them that I work with find themselves stressed at the end of each month because their numbers aren't coming in and they hate, they really hate having to explain performance gaps at quarterly business reviews with senior management. Um, so leaders who have left their execution a chance really get forced into a bad spot. They become accepting of mediocre performance. There's no way that they even have expectations of being a top performing business unit. They spend a lot of time, far too much time, searching for the answers as to why they're not making it. You can see them in the hall because their stress levels, they're running around and their stress levels are high, they're constantly busy, and guess what? They end up working much harder than their colleagues who are much more organized and focused on execution. And I don't want this to be any of you because I remember how frustrating it was when the company would hand over marketing strategies. I was VP of sales. Uh, they wouldn't sort of give us execution guidelines. And then they would say they would get upset when sales numbers were not coming in. And there's an old adage, which I didn't quote here, but just thought about, uh, which one of my good friends would always say, and he doesn't take, um, Paul doesn't take, um, uh, that the quote is his, but he used to always tell me, when, when everything works, it's great marketing strategy. When it fails, it's poor sales execution, right? And those of you who run just sales understand exactly what I'm talking about. And the other thing is I believe that you deserve and are 100% capable, when I share my training with you, of crushing your sales numbers. So one of the things I want to do is just compare strategy in most companies versus execution. So if you look from a very simplistic level, uh, and I'm applying this to many of the health care companies that I've worked for and worked with. Um, strategy development, uh, when you're doing brand planning, companies probably spend upwards of two months analyzing their brands, analyzing their markets, their competitors, uh, and, and really figuring out 
where they sit, uh, what their growth trends are. On the execution side, you're lucky. You know, companies are really lucky if they spend more than two days with their sales management team talking about how to execute. On the strategy development side, you know, most companies, most large multinational companies have very well-defined marketing processes. Okay, so the marketer, you know, basically has templates they need to run through and it's very formalized. On the execution side, there's no process. You know, uh, I'd be happy if anyone had a process to share with me. Uh, I'll share one with you. What they end up developing is detailed brand plans, okay, with strategies and tactics and timing and growth and, you know, dollar sales, uh, dollar investment. On the execution side, there's no formal plan ever developed. Now, if you look at, at, at the strategy, usually, you know, there's key metrics like market share and growth targets. On the execution side, which I always find really funny, is there are no metrics. So how do you know if we've ever been successful? And that's really one of the challenges. So again, if you look at strategy plus execution equals success, then where most companies are struggling is not on the strategy side. It's about driving execution. So I want to share with you 10 elements that have come out of my research in the area of really delivering incredible execution or what some people call executional excellence. And these are 10 items. There's no rank order in terms of priority. They're all really important elements to the, to the process. So number one, planning. If you're not going to spend any time planning or build a plan, you know, forget about it. You're, you're lost. Uh, focus. Some companies try to focus on too many things. One of the key things about execution is really windling down or finding out the two or three, maybe four things that are going to make you successful if you focus on them. So you're really about refining your focus to what's critical. Alignment, you need to make sure your team, your sales and marketers are well aligned uh, and they have clarity so they're clear as to what's important. One of the biggest issues we face, and I'll show you a great slide coming up, but this whole idea of, you know, if you give them the plan, you know, it's your plan. If they are involved in the process, then automatically there's buy-in and there's ownership. In a lot of cases, you know, that's something that's lacking. Accountability, well, you know, the only way people are going to be accountable is if they have specific numbers and that you have a process to hold them accountable. Leadership is critical because execution is not just in the course of two days or three days planning. It's about leading the way throughout the year. Having support of other departments, and sometimes departments are aligned, but the operational support departments are just not there to do that. One of the other key things, and we'll talk about today, is the last two is metrics and discipline. And, and if you don't have metrics, and I'm not talking metrics like sales or, you know, or, or, uh, or growth numbers, I'm talking about metrics that, that actually look at how well you're executing. If you don't have those and you don't have the discipline to review those, well, all this work breaks down. So here's, here's the exciting part. Um, you know, uh, the, the reality is we all know it's not easy to execute. We all know companies are struggling. I don't think I'm telling you anything you don't know. But what I'm very excited today to share with you is my three-step process to crushing your sales numbers by executing with excellence. And, and let me run through it. And, uh, you know, I, I talked about this earlier. So step one, you need to build a plan, right? Without a plan, you know, if it's not written, if it's not formalized, then nobody else remembers. You need a lead execution. Execution is not just something that you, you know, you come up with a plan. It's about following through with your people, and maybe it's your salespeople, maybe it's your marketing folks, but following through and leading them to, to execute what they said they're going to do. And then there's a whole component of what I call management discipline, which is really comes down to tracking and reviewing the metrics that you come up with to track execution on a monthly basis and on a quarterly basis, maybe in greater detail, of how execution is going. Leading, leading tracking, and reviewing is an ongoing process, right? And if you look at it uh, from a calendar perspective, uh, next two months, as I said, is critical, or next month and a half, maybe sometime into January, it's really critical that you build your plan. Otherwise, you're not really starting the year off and running or have clarity or alignment or ownership into how you're going to execute. And then the rest of the year is basically leading the execution 
and having management discipline to follow up and make sure things are on track. And I think this adage um, works incredibly well. Uh, you know, in business, no one plans to fail, yet many fail to plan. And when I look at the industry specifically that I've geared this to, they do a great job planning. But what they plan is their marketing strategies and tactics. They neglect to plan how they're going to execute those. So I'm going to take you through the through uh, building the plan in greater detail because that is the key step you really need to put in place. So I'm going to break that down into a series of steps and run through my thinking and, and I think sort of best practices. Uh, and if you think about those 10 elements, I'm going to circle back to those and see what the first step in the process does. And within the building planning, the, sorry, building the plan, the number one thing to start with is what are your critical success factors? It's not about what are your strategies, and really what a critical success factor is, is identifying the things that really matter for success. Okay, so if we train our reps to be top in their area, that's a critical success factor. I'm not saying it's for each company, but that's a critical success factor. So what we do is uh, we find works best is to bring the whole team in to set up a planning meeting, uh, including sales management and marketing management. And really, as you see these folks working through their meeting, uh, it's getting them to brainstorm and really come up with two or three key things, maybe four, one group pushed me to five, that they have to do extremely well to crush their sales numbers. So again, it comes down to critical success factors, everyone having some input, and then as a team, really refining down and prioritizing those three things, which is a manageable number to do that are going to make you successful. It's not, a, it, and that's really where the focus comes in. After you've done that, after as a team, you, you've identified, prioritized your critical success factors, then the challenge becomes is, well, how are you going to do those? And that's always a hard part, right? Uh, developing the how-tos. But you need to have an action plan. You need to think through how you're going to be successful in that critical area or how you're going to achieve your critical success factors. So again, it means bringing the team together to build their own plan on how they're going to do that and, of course, to vet it and work it through as a team. The third component, once you've got your critical success factors, you've developed how you're going to get there, you know, as Tom Peter says, what gets measured gets done. And he's the uh, famous writer of number one uh, selling best, uh, number one national bestseller book in search of excellence was, I think was popular in the 80s and 90s, but uh, Tom Peters is, is well recognized as a, as a guru in the area of management. Okay, and here's a, here's a guy, let's call him Joe. And I'm just going to have a quick drink, but you can read this. And I'm not sure if I hear the laughter, but I, I kind of chuckle at this. And Joe is a prime example of when you don't have metrics, people make up crazy reasons why they're not successful. Okay, and the last step, uh, once you've got your critical success factors, you figure out how you're going to achieve each one of them, you have metrics, is to put that into a written plan and also develop a scorecard, which on a monthly basis tracks those key metrics you want to track. So just in summary, uh, there are four steps, maybe arguably five, uh, involved in building your execution plan. And if you consider the brand planning process that takes a month or two minimum, we crunch that down, that process, into two days. Okay? And if you remember, so, you know, if you're not spending those two days, you know, you're really not set to crush your sales numbers or set to execute, and I think, hey, if you have good strategies, you'll probably do good. But if you have good strategies and excellence in execution, that's a situation that you can crush your numbers. So let's look, and, and, and if you look at the tick marks, these are the ones that building an execution plan solves. One, from a planning perspective, you get everyone to plan it. You're going to get focus on the two or three key things that are crucial. You'll have alignment amongst the management team as to what is crucial and what each team of sales and marketing need to do to make that successful. There's clarity. Okay, everyone who's gone through the process 
is clear on what's important. Through involving people in a planning process, you naturally build buy-in and ownership to the plan because it's not your plan as the business unit, unit leader, it's their plan. Okay, And if you look at the fact that we built in the metrics, we actually create accountability. One, they develop the plan. Two, they set the metrics. So, you know, it's not you as the business unit head. You're part of the process, but immediately you're able to check off seven of the ten elements by putting the first step in place. Okay, second step, and I just want to get into it just very briefly, um, but... You know, again, recognizing how important the first step is, and you really can't do the first one, it's sequential. Um, you know, you can't do the second or third without the first one being in place. So, leading execution, and this game again came from Ram Sharan, who uh, I think had, as I said, 20 uh, business books and, and is an expert. Uh, execution is the job of the business leader. And really, as the business leader, it's up to you to coach and mentor your team. It really looks at holding monthly one on one meetings making sure each of your leaders has a development plan and they're also doing it for their team uh, and that you have a process in place uh, that you're reviewing on a monthly basis with them one-on-one -on -one how they are proceeding and that they're actually driving that process as a leader uh, of their region or uh, their product. Step three, what I call management discipline. Um, and I'm not sure who this quote came from. I tried to find out, but uh, it's in my book. Um, but your people respect what you inspect. So if you're not going back and looking at the metrics, guess what? They're going to be forgotten. So it's very critical that we, you know, not every day. And I used to have a boss who, uh, you know, would uh, we plant the seed, and every single day he'd dig it up to see why it's not growing. That's micromanagement. What I'm saying is, on a periodic basis, maybe it's once a month that you actually go over the numbers with the people and hope that they're in a position where they're actually driving that and coming to you saying, okay, I'm off on this and this is what I'm doing about it. And that's where the leadership comes in. But management really needs to have that discipline in place that that thinking happens. And, and really what it looks like, uh, it's really about tracking your success. And if you're not on, 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 you know, on track or things are not happening, you can always adapt your plan, you, you know, your strategies, your execution tactics, but really when I look at monthly and quarterly business reviews, okay, you need to be tracking and talking about those critical success factors and the metrics you have, what are some of the key deliverables that people have committed to, and also I truly believe, you know, as a leadership expert, that part of what all leaders need to be doing is having individual development plans for their people, so as an organization we're all getting better. So I just want to summarize here, and uh, after I summarize, maybe I'll just take a, a quick drink as my throat gets a little uh, uh, dry. But what we've talked about is, number one, um, execution is not an easy thing to do. You know, you know whether it's 60%, 70 80 or 90% of organizations are having a challenge executing their strategy, it's more than the average, it's more than half the companies are having those issues. Again. Most employees, more than half, are saying their organization is weak at execution. And, and really the key is it's really up to leadership to take a stand and saying, hey, we're going to get great at execution. I've shared with you a, a three-step process that creates a plan. It also creates you know, leadership and management discipline around the plan. And my key message, uh, and I'll repeat it again, some people say you have to repeat things eight times for folks to remember, so hopefully at least one walk away you'll have from, from this session is execution is key to crushing your sales numbers. So let me just take a drink, and while I do that, I want to come back and, and take another poll, and AJ, if you can tee it up for me. And um, really what I want to get a sense is now that you've gone through this training, do you feel like you are well positioned to crush your numbers in 2017. So same question, but really I want to know if this training is going to help you be in a better position to do so. And I'll take a little drink while we run the poll. Okay, 
Okay, so AJ, you've, you've closed it up. Thank you everybody for your, for your input. And just to review uh, where we started, um, it, it looks like we moved from 57% of folks feeling like they're in a good position to crush their numbers to 67%. And conversely, you know, so two thirds are feeling really good about things. And, uh, and we've actually had a 10% drop in people who, you know, who on the converse drop, uh, you know, that 33% of people uh, again feel that they may need some more help. So uh, I'm not actually really glad with the, with the results of the training. I wish I could do more. And uh, what I'd like to do um, is extend an offer to those who are interested in putting into action what I shared today with a simple, in a very simple and effective way. So we, we have two options here. And one is, hey, you know what? There is a real big gap in terms of you know where we are from an execution perspective. So we can either go ahead uh, and, and delve into uh, a little bit more and help those folks who, who need help and maybe even help those folks who, who are feeling really good now. And here's one of the challenges we face. And we call it the big gap. And the big gap between information that you get, which we just shared today, and execution. And I realize some of you right now may be thinking, I get it. Stephen, what Stephen taught me is simple, and I'm ready to get to work. Yet, if you did some research into psychology, you realize the truth is, and it's called the forgetting curve. And, and it was um, delivered by a gentleman by the name of Herman Ebb. Ebb Ebbing who's and he did some research and he found that within one hour people have forgotten an average of 50% of what they were taught and within 24 hours it's 70% and and basically uh, within a week pretty much all of it is lost now I know some of you I mean saying to yourself but I've taken good notes I'm really good and if you're anything like me I have a notebook full of notes and I have the greatest intentions to follow through. Yet the reality is many of them sit on the shelf or, or just get put away. And that's the truth for many people. You're probably not bridging the gap between what you've learned and putting into action. It's very much like execution. Even with this training being solid and actionable, I know it's not enough. And I know you need more if you're serious about executing with excellence and crushing your sales numbers. So I'm going to start talking about my offer now, and as I do, I'm going to continue to give solid, actionable content. So let me introduce it to you, and I spoke about it briefly earlier. It's called the STAR Business Execution Program, and it's got three components. And the first one, and it's really a combination of uh, rigorous training, coaching, and consulting. So step one is really about a workshop that we put on, and we facilitate your team in building their execution plan. Step two, many leaders are busy and they have challenges really uh, coaching and mentoring their people. So we're able to offer that and that's my one of my areas of expertise. And we coach in two areas. One is we coach along execution to make sure they're focused on their critical success factors. And two, we coach on developing their leadership skills. Three, uh, we create, manage, and report on your critical success factors if you don't have the resources to do it. And really it involves tracking your key metrics and committing to a business review process. So the question is who's it for? Who benefits the most? And as I said earlier, uh, the training uh, that we had, and I know the folks who are, are buying in are either VPs of sales and marketing, business unit directors, VPs and directors of sales or national sales managers. And we've had really good traction in, in the healthcare industries. So if you're content with just making your numbers next year, hey, this really isn't for you. If you want to crush your numbers in 2017, then I'm glad you're on this training and I invite you to take the first step. And the first step is having me come and work with your team in an interactive workshop, which culminates in building your ex execution plan. And the first step is really critical. 
It'll set your team up for success. So we run your team through on this workshop, a two-day, highly interactive, everyone's working, everyone's contributing, and we facilitate your team in building their business execution plan. By the end of those two days, we've got all the rough notes, and we'll go back and, and draft your plan for you. Okay, and in the workshop, we follow the same process I talked about. We identify, prioritize, and get the team to agree on the three critical success factors. We help them build a plan how to get there, determine how to measure success, and then really, you know, at the end of the day, it, it, it creates an alignment between sales and marketing. And the outcomes that you get uh, through building this business execution plan is the team is highly aligned, you've got clarity on what's critical for success, you have a focus on how to get there, folks are bought into the plan because they own the plan, and then you have accountability built in or baked into the metrics. So, you know, I really, you know, given, you know, given the webinar format, I really want to make this a no-risk offer. And at the end of the day, I normally sell the program as a complete program for an entire year. And we have a number of clients already signed up to the program. But I want to help you as a company as much as I can. And the best way I can do that is to reduce the risk for you. And by, by basically saying, hey, we're going to have you just look at step one and come in and do a two-day business execution workshop to put you in position to crush your sales numbers. And if you're not completely satisfied with the work, there's no obligation for step two and three, but you walk away with a working execution plan which can easily drive incremental two to five percent of your sales. So what's your investment? I asked several of my clients, you know, what they'd be willing to pay. You know, and some of them are, are, are in this neighborhood. And they said, you know, to, to have you know two-day workshop plus have our plan written up, we're looking at twelve thousand dollars plus. And I, I could charge that and go to bed feeling good about it. Because I have a detailed execution plan which will provide one to two percent more sales. And if you're a fifty million dollar business, you're looking at an extra five hundred thousand to a million dollars in sales. And that's like a you know a 40 times or 80 times ROI. But I'm committed to creating success stories and want to see you crush your sales numbers. So I decided to offer the workshop at $7,500, which again includes two days of facilitation wherever you are in the world. There may be some travel uh, to, to cover on that. And then we'll also take away from that and write up your plan and have it ready for you to go uh, one, to present maybe to senior management, and two, to have a working document that you can use throughout the year. But you know what, I thought, okay, that's great. How do we make sure it happens? And, and what I've decided to do is have a special bonus. And, and we usually charge for this, but for this webinar only, I will set up four follow-up phone calls at the quarter. So, um, you know, after March, after June, and we'll set up four follow-up calls with you to make sure that you're on track for hitting your numbers. And that, and that I, I charge you know, four calls uh, at an hour or more is $2,000. But the trick is, if you want to get this $2,000 extra value, you need to book a meeting with me by Thursday. It doesn't mean we have to talk by Thursday. It means you need to book a meeting with me and, then, and speak by the end of next week. I know people are busy and even finding time to come onto this webinar. Many folks uh, were unable to make it who want to make it. Uh, so if you set up the phone call and we talk before the end of next week, um, you'll get the following uh, from our workshop, a highly aligned sales team, ownership of the plan, much improved communication and understanding between sales and marketing, um, executional excellence, and team accountability. And all you got to do is go to www slash slash starresults.com, let's talk. And from there, you can book an appointment into my calendar. I've got a number of time slots opened and really excited um, to work with, with new clients and help them become very successful. And maybe you're thinking right now, can this program do what I say it can do? Can it really help me improve execution and crush my, my sales numbers? And that's why I don't want to take any money today. Most of these webinars, you know, they ask you to put money up front. I want to speak to you. I want to understand where you're at. And I want to see how I can have a tremendous impact on your execution. 
And I can tell you the Star Business Execution Workshop is my best program I've ever offered. And I want to make it easy for you to be successful in 2017. The reality is, if I would have presented this two months ago, no one would have been ready. Uh, but time is very short. So I just want to share with you, and again, it, again, you may want to take this down, uh, www.starresults.com, uh, let's talk. Okay, these are some of my satisfied clients who are in very senior positions, and this is what they had to say about working with me, and uh, I'll have you read those, and uh, I'll have an opportunity to sip some coffee. That was Stu Fowler, Pierre Bordage. Uh, who moved from a business unit manager to, uh, to be general manager of UK and Ireland at Alcon. Uh, we had some really good projects we worked on together and uh, uh, helped him move through his organization and be successful. Very smart business leader. And of course, uh, Stu Fowler was one of my first clients and uh, I've had a history of working with Stu over the last uh, 13 years in my business and we continue to work together. He's president and general manager of Alcon, but also when we started working together, he was a business unit head. And lastly, just to, uh, to round out uh, testimonials, and I've got a whole bunch on my website of other ones, uh, Todd Damon, who when I started working with him was a head of sales, and now he's executive director sales and marketing at Allergan, and has really benefited from the work we've done together. Uh, and he is ready to go with the program. We have a date booked for December 7th and I think 8th. So what you get is one, my expertise, my 25 years of expertise in the area of leadership, leadership development and execution. We'll facilitate, we'll come to wherever you're gonna be, facilitate a two-day business execution workshop, we'll write up your plan, and I will be in touch with you once a quarter to make sure things are on track. And all you need to do is book an appointment and, and find out more about how this would work for you. And, and this is how I picture folks who, who I work with. You know, the blue line or the blue arrow really looks at um, what you can do with your great strategies you've put in place. You'll probably have good performance, but the amplifier or the multiplier is great execution. And if you need help in that area, I'm happy to help you. There's not too many folks who are experts in that area, and that will boost your sales up to the red line. So you can sit back like this gentleman, and of course ladies who, uh, who run business units, uh, can have the execution factor, which is really about crushing your sales numbers, not just making them. So if you want to chat, come to www.starresults.com and let's talk. So I want to open things up uh, for questions and answers. Um, I've been talking for, I don't know how many minutes now, probably about 40. And um, I'm very enthused about this. Uh, you know, I'm looking to help companies all over the world and I, I've done so um, in my history and want to continue doing so. So AJ, let's let's open it up to questions. If, if you folks want to type into the chat box, any questions you have, uh, we'll take a number of questions. Awesome. Thank you. So, so one of the, the questions, man, is um, just kind of want to define like what crush, you know, people are asking like, what are crush your sales numbers? Like what can they really expect when they sit down, work with you, map out that plan? I mean, is it like a 1% growth, 2% growth? What do you feel like is like a realistic expectation when it comes to crush? Um, when going through this process. Okay, so crush for me, it, you know, most companies have gotten very good at the budget process and, you know, it, 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 especially if you're a public company and you're at 105, people are saying you sandbagged your numbers. Well, for me, crushing is being over 105, okay, because if you haven't executed well in the, in the past year, the fact is you're going to do so much better. So to me, I'm looking at 5% to 10% sales over your over your plan in most cases companies are coming in at 101 98 whatever the case may be 97 so to me it's being five to ten percent or more over uh, you know where your where your plan is or where your objectives are awesome another question is is like how does it really work when you go into the office for kind of laying out the execution are you just working with the sales managers or their entire teams or just kind of what does that look like Okay, uh, that's a good question. Um, you know, what works best, uh, I mean, sales managers or in the or sales management team are the ones who execute. But bringing in both the sales and the marketing team, the commercial arm, and I'm not talking about sales reps, I'm talking about the management teams and the product managers and directors of marketing, bringing them in really helps to solve communication issues that may exist and really get everyone focused, not just on the tactics, but how to execute the tactics. So, 
my preference over a two-day two -day facilitation meeting is bringing in both groups and really having them work together because you get much better alignment and you know high performance teams uh, really need to be aligned to, to achieve high performance. Another question was you have like a HBR article within your presentation and a person yes. wanted to know like where could they find that at? Uh, <laughs> I have a copy but it's not for duplication but I, I did pick it up at uh, Harvard Business Review. Uh, if you send me a, uh, a note that you're interested in it, that Stephen at StarResults.com, uh, I'd be happy to uh, show you, just give you the link to to get the article. So what really needs to happen is I need to bring you in for the two-day execution process, and you'll just bring it with you, and then they can read it while you're there, right? <laughs> uh, uh, okay. I'm not sure what that was. That a question? No, yeah, one of one of the questions oh, before they get the it. HBR I thing. I'm saying no, I, I could email it, but I'd be in copyright infringement. No, no, I was being sarcastic. So yeah. here's another question: Is um, how long like will does it take for these people to see results? I mean, is it like within? I mean, I know it's a whole year long process to execute, um, but I know as much as you know, if people have the plan, then they can show up and do the work. And as long as they show up, then they know they're going to get these numbers. So just from your experience, you know, what what's, can people kind of expect from this? Well, here's the beautiful thing. Most companies, and uh, why we coincided this webinar, you know, have a kickoff to the year, and usually it's a national sales meeting um, with their salespeople. And if the management team is very focused and, and, and has done the work, to build a plan and they're prepared to support the plan, what you're going to do is you're going to kick off your year with a much better start than you ever have. I, I can't tell you what the sales will translate into in your first month because you really need to execute over a period of time and consistently execute to really start to see the results. But I can guarantee you come the end of the year, if you put the plan in place and you've supported it and you put in your management discipline, you are going to get far better results. And when I talk about crushing your numbers, to me it's minimum 5% over target. The last question that, that's here too is there's lots of people that were in Russia, they're in Spain, they're all over the place and maybe bringing you in is not an option. Is there an option for them to reach out to talk to you about exploring some type of win-win situation uh, for those people who are outside of Canada or America? Uh, for sure, for sure. In fact, I've traveled to Spain for, for training, I've traveled to the UK, I haven't traveled to Russia, um, so I'd be happy to... Uh, to speak to anyone on this call and see how we can put them in the right direction, how we can help them have a successful year and put in place a, a process. And um, you know, I certainly don't want to exclude uh, travel to Europe or Asia because uh, you know the value that I bring in working with the team um, is just tremendous, and the results. You know, if, regardless of size of business you are, if you're looking at five to ten percent. Uh, growth over your plan, um, it, it pays for itself. But call me, set up a schedule a meeting at starresults.com. Let's talk. Awesome. Um, last question here. This is from Alvaro out in Spain. He says their sales cycle is really long. Uh, so I actually think this is a great question for a lot of people if they have long sales cycles. And decisions for them can take up to two years. So what can he identify as the impact in a short term? And I think a better way to phrase that is maybe you could give him kind of an expectation of, of what you guys could accomplish in your two days together to help them identify the impact in the short term since their sales cycle is so long. Uh, can you just, uh, can, can, you, can you help me out when, what industry he's in? Uh, yeah, so Alvaro, if you'll just type here in the questions box, like what your industry in, uh, that way we could definitely make this a little bit more relevant to your situation um, but let's just say theoretically man let's say uh, he's in pharmaceutical sales okay well I, I you know he might be medical devices actually he's the supplier to pharmaceutical so okay so uh, I'm surprised it, it's it, it's a two-year selling cycle but you know maybe one of the critical success factors is shortening your selling cycle uh, I'm not there to tell you how to run your business I'm there to facilitate the thinking within the management team to really come up with you know, if that's a critical success factor, shorten the selling cycle, and maybe it's getting payers on board, or, or you know, maybe you're in, um, you know, chron not ch chronic diseases or, or rare diseases is what I'm looking for. Uh, we can certainly look at what it's going to take to move your business a lot faster. 
Um, and, 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 and just like, specifically, Stephen, uh, contamination control, I don't know if that's we could take that to apply to the rest of the people in the training uh, as well. Okay, so contamination control, uh, assuming that is uh, probably for hospitals, uh, you know, to make sure that hospitals are, are, are not having secondary infections post-surgical. Um, you know, I think there's some great data and some great pre best practices around the world on that. Uh, and maybe there are some ways that, uh, you know, to, to me, if you have a two-year selling cycle, uh, sometimes reps don't even last a year, so would you restart the selling cycle? So I think one of your critical success factors, and uh, of course it comes back to the management team, is how do you shorten your selling cycle? And, and really understanding how you can do that, and it may come down to, you know, having some really strong data and, and impact data on, on the hospital. Of course, I'm making assumptions in terms of savings. Uh, and better outcomes and savings to the healthcare system. So maybe some of that work needs to be done before to support your salespeople and really get them into a process of, uh, you know, what is the value that your your contamination system provides in terms of, um, you know, savings within the hospital and savings within the healthcare system. So you know, uh, you know you're, you're you're welcome to set up a time and I can speak to you directly. And, and better understand what challenges you're facing and how I might be able to help. And that's why we've structured it this way. Um, it, it's not forcing people to put out any money uh, because really I want to understand your business and your challenges uh, to help you move forward and to decide uh, you know, how, how and if you'll benefit from, from working with me. Awesome. So that's going to conclude Q&A. Uh, if you just want to wrap up with any last thoughts and just wrap this puppy up, Stephen. Okay. Well, thank you, AJ, for, for your help on this and uh, making sure everything is, uh, has gone off smoothly. I, I, I can uh, say we've had no technical issues, which is sometimes a, a worry in webinars. But again, it, my message to those folks uh, who, have, who have endured and, uh, and learned some really interesting things is most companies don't do a good job executing. If you're able to start getting really serious about executing and planning that, you're going to crush your sales numbers. And I think far too many companies leave the execution portion to chance thinking someone else will do it. So as a leader of your business, uh, you know, if you want to take your business to the next level, then it really it's about figuring out and building a plan on how you're going to execute with excellence. And then you can, you can say, hey, I'm truly ready and in a position to crush my sales numbers in 2017. Uh, again, feel free I've opened up my personal calendar and um, uh, put out the offer to you you know let's talk let's understand what your challenges are and how I can help you be successful in 2017 thank you for your time and hopefully you've you've gotten a lot of value out of our our short interaction today